Hey, konnichiwa, I'm san It's Gray from Akazashi's Tea House over in Japan. How are you doing? You good? Are you Genki? Am I Genki? I am right now, but I don't know how long it's going to last because I'm going to jump in and watch the first episode of Fallout. See what it's like, okay? Now, I've got to make a big point here that I've no idea about this property, okay? All I know is that Amazon have dropped all the episodes today, opening day, and it's it's directed or the first three episodes are directed by Jonathan Nolan. Jonathan Nolan of the peripheral fame. Oh my god, what did he do to peripheral? I love the book by the way by William Gibson, but um after the first two episodes of that Less said about that, the better. Just ask Prophet Steve or um, Zach's about it. Anyway, so let's get a little bit of background on this before we dive in. It says here it's um, an American post-apocalyptic drama TV series created by Graham Wagner. Graham, sound familiar? Um, and Geneva Robertson Dwarrett for Amazon Prime Video. Based on the role-playing game and um, video game franchise created by Interplay Entertainment now owned by Bethesda or Bethesda Softworks. Amazon purchased the rights to produce a live action project in nine, um, 2020, not 1920, and the show was announced that July with Jonathan Nolan and Lisa Joy's Kilter Films, joined by Bethesda Game Studios in the production. Nolan has directed the first three episodes, as I already said. Um, the game studio producer Todd Howard, who directed various games in the series, signed on to it, executive produce. So it's premiering today. Well, in Japan, it's April the 11th, but it's April the 10th where it premiered in the US. Very rare for Amazon Prime to drop all the episodes at once. They usually drop three, two or three, and then release weekly. So is it a good sign or is it not? Anyway, I'll be right back with my reaction after the first episode. Hey, how are you doing? I'm back. Okay, I'm only 25 minutes in. Here are my first initial thoughts. It looks good. It's very well shot. Um, nice costumes, nice design. Some of the CDs, you know, what you expect these days. But yeah, um, I like the brief look at the character who was played by Walter Goggins before, before he mutates. Him here with a great cowboy hat on. And um, also good to see Kyle McLachlan's in here. Great to see Agent Cooper, damn fine coffee. But the main character, where are we? Let me get the photo up. Here she is. It's the actress Ella Purnell as Lucy McLean. She's the character's name. She is, so far, again, only 25 minutes, she's perfect. She's pretty much perfect at everything and she's pretty annoying, but maybe she's meant to be. Maybe she's written that way. As I say, don't forget, I don't know anything about the property. But yeah, give you an example. We get an opening medley of um, different moments of her to show her character. Of course, she's she's brilliant at martial arts. You know, she takes down a much bigger guy and she's got him in, a, in an arm lock here with ease. She's so good at shooting a rifle, she shoots with her eyes closed, of course, and nails a target dead center. Look at that, what a bullseye. Now again, maybe it's meant to be like this, maybe this is deliberate, but it's like, come on. Have we seen this before? The girl who's the key to everything, the Mary Sue, the perfect warrior, you know, perfect at almost everything, gets better. Bear with me. So here's the wonderful Kyle McLaughlin as Lucy's father. Um, he's the overseer of Vault 33. I think it's Hank McLean. Yeah, you know, he's good in it so far. He's only got a very small role, as I say, only 25 minutes in. But he's um, he's at a wedding of his daughter. So they get, she's getting married to... The, um, the Chosen One from Vault 32. That's how it starts. And I'm not going to um, spoil too much, but let me just get to the wedding night. Here we go. As the first episode came on, you get the usual uh, content warnings. You know, it's like, okay, there's going to be nudity, violence, gore, that kind of thing. So I was like, you know, hey, great. I'm always up for a bit of nudity. But guess what? On her wedding night, he strips off right from the start. He's completely butt naked. She keeps her wedding dress and veil on the whole time, the whole way through the scene, having sex later on in bed together. She's still got it all on and he's, you know, he's start naked. I'm getting sick of this. Is it like, is it making up for the, you know, the old days, the 70s and the 80s where, you know, yeah, you did get quite a lot of female nudity. You don't see anything anymore. You don't get anything. I know what a sad old man, but hey, what can you do? That's who I am. 
I'm looking for, you know, fairness. Okay, let's have 50-50. Not like 90, not even 90-10, is it? It's like 100-0 at the moment. But anyway, sex scene with a naked man and a fully clothed in a bridal wear, even with a veil on, woman. Now, something happens, which again, I won't spoil, but they get into a fight and guess what? He has her overpowered. He has her like, you know, pressed down on, on a, I think it's not a chest of drawers there. She she knocks him off. She kicks him down. He's on the floor, you know, with ease. There's, there's no chance. I know we've been told that she's supposedly an expert in martial arts and, oh, fencing, by the way, I forgot to mention that, and rifle shooting, but, you know, overpowered. Come on, there's not a chance she would be getting up. And, you know, he knocks her across the floor. She gets knocked into a, a glass door. Hey, we get some smashed glass, which, you know, we do know Jonathan Nolan loves from the peripheral. She just picks herself up. And it gets even better. He draws out a knife. Have a knife fight. She's blocking it. No problem. She gets the knife easily. Then, surprise, surprise, accidentally, of course, because it's not on purpose, accidentally, she gets stabbed. Look at this. She takes a knife to the gut. That looks serious, doesn't it, right? Come on, this is modern day TV streaming programs. What she does, she um, she pulls out the knife, and this is where I stopped watching. <laughs> I just thought, okay, I want to get my thoughts into order. She just pulls it out. I guess she just patches herself up and she's fine. Hey, at least it wasn't a lightsaber. Now, wait a minute. Even those don't work anymore, do they? <laughs> Especially not if you're female. How dare you? Okay. Again, I'm not going to apologise, but do take my comments with, uh, you know, a lot of sarcasm intended. It's meant to be. If it's meant to be played for laughs, fair enough, but i just like, I've seen this before. It's just ridiculous. I know it's not meant to be realistic, but come on. Let's get back to the show. Hey, how's it going? I'm back. I've finished episode one. It took a lot longer than I thought. Man, it was slow. I'll tell you that. Lots of talking and lots of drawn out scenes, but yes. Okay, where were we? So I was saying... um. She, she gets stabbed and she she can repair herself, of course, can't she? She gets the first aid box, but all she does is use this syringe. Gives herself a shot of something. That's it. Doesn't patch up the wound, you know, doesn't like staple it together or glue it together, whatever. This big knife wound in her stomach. And then the next minute, she's running down a corridor. <laughs> like holding... Oh, she's trying to hold her side there or she's holding a dress, a skirt. But yeah, she's running. Seems to be fine. I guess the bleeding has stopped. Then she runs outside to help her friends. Well, you say outside, but you know, within the vault. And the pregnant woman has got a fork in the eye here. Look at this. Got a fork in the eye, but that doesn't stop her. Guess what she does next? That's right. She picks up a gun, a machine gun, and starts mowing everybody down. The pregnant woman, yeah, of course. Because of course she does. <laughs> Um, meanwhile, I haven't shown pictures of, um, you know, guys, multiple men just dropping like flies, being beaten easily. There's a bit of a recurring theme, isn't there, in this? Yeah. And here we see Lucy has found her brother. Not sure if he's older or younger, but he's already said, you know, he's he's terrified. He, he can't fight. He can't do anything. She gets him to safety. Then she goes to help her father. And here you can see she remembers um, she's been stabbed in the stomach. So she's actually, she's got a hand over the wound there. Okay, sorry, I can't help it. I've just been so jaded by these, you know, these incredibly overpowered girl bosses who can do anything and everything. And yeah, again, as I say, it's only the first episode. I don't know if this is um, is it meant to be like this. It's deliberate. You know, it's meant to be played for laughs. But yeah, this was really boring. Okay, let's get to the, the second kind of scene, the second story that's going on within the first episode. Let's have a look at Maximus and what he's all about. So here we find Maximus. He's part of, or he's training for the Brotherhood of Steel. Again, I don't know, um, you know, the background of this. I just know the names. Look at the size of his arms here. You know, he's in good shape. He looks, he looks physical. Although he was getting beaten up in a fight. Then look at his friend. You can't see the the face, but look at the look at the thin arms. They're this thin, thinner than mine almost. Or maybe mine are as thin. It's like Twiggy McBeanpole. Twiggy McScarecrow is part of the you know the the Brotherhood of Steel or the training members anyway. It's just bizarre. Let me get another picture to show you. There we go. There's a better picture, and I'm not clear if it's um, a man or a woman. It's just not clear. She, he or she has a very very high feminine voice. Um, looks like a feminine face, but I don't know. Can they? Do they have women members too? Yeah, I guess they do. But yeah, it's not made clear, and I didn't catch their name. Then here we get a great shot of the Brotherhood of Steel in power armor. Look at these. These look do look great, and I love the way they move, the sounds they make. 
Uh, there's real physicality to them. I'm glad they did it with proper armor, not with CG. Yeah, these are cool. I do like these. I don't know much about them, as I say, but I've got like a space marine feel to them. Then the scene shifts and we jump back to Lucy. And here we go. We actually get to see the wound. She's um, she's finally stapling it together. You know, that is a pretty serious wound. Hard to see on the picture. It's a bit small, but yeah, a proper knife wound. It looks like it's in a different place than it was when she got stabbed initially. It's more to the side. Guess she was lucky, eh? You're lucky. He's lucky. I'm lucky. We're all lucky. <laughs> so Lucy's basically off outside to go and hunt for her father because, of course, she is. Um, her brother, you know, again, he says, he makes it clear that he's too afraid. He's too scared. So and she warns him, you know, don't make me trank you. Don't make like I did to the other guy, to my boyfriend. Well, the guy, the guy who wanted to be my boyfriend, this really big guy. She tranked him so he wouldn't follow her. Yeah. So anyway, it's <laughs> just more of the same, isn't it? She gets outside the vault and we get a first view of the, the outside, the wasteland, the, you know, the radioactive, uh, reduced to rubble earth, what's left of earth. It's pretty cool. This looks decent. And she gets to see the sea, I guess, for the first time in her life. Doesn't really react to it, though, which is a bit a bit uh, disappointing. But we can see, like, a ruined um, pier there with a big wheel, a Ferris wheel. Yeah, it just looks like a wasteland. Then, after a long, drawn-out scene where we've got Maximus being questioned and eventually becoming a squire, we finally get to see Walter Goggins as the, the ghoul, you know, the mutated um, bounty hunter. Pretty cool scene here at the end, and that's it. The episode finishes over like one hour, ten minutes maybe. And you know what? It really felt long. But I've got to say, yeah, I'm kind of curious to see at least how the next one is. I'm going to give it a couple of episodes, see how it goes. But I've got to say, um, the reviews have been going crazy. Um, it was funny. I was on a stream with a couple of buddies earlier on, only a few hours ago. And um, we had a quick check of the, the initial reviews, the ratings. And Rotten Tomatoes was like, you know, 93 or whatever. It's always high. But IMDb at that moment was on 2 out of 10, the average. And I had a quick look and there'd only been 20 user reviews. Only 20 at that point. Went back a couple of hours later and it's jumped right up to like, I think it's like 7 out of 10 now. And there's only like another 10 or 15 reviews gone up. So that's a big jump, isn't it? From 2 out of 10 up to 7 out of 10. Yeah, that was a big surprise. So let me know what you think. Are you watching? Are you going to watch? Do you know much about it? Have you played the games? Do you know the, the characters? Do you know the world? Um, do let me know what you think. And I hope you enjoyed my, yeah, my rather <laughs> world weary and tired. And oh God, here we go again. Um, summation of episode one of Fallout. Thanks for watching. This has been Grey from Akazashi's Tea House. Signing off for the night. Mathane. Sayonara, sucker.